The Gundawindi Region Agribusiness Summit 2022 gave attendees the opportunity to learn, experiment, build awareness, connect and grow as primary producers, business owners and natural resource managers. Being a local land care group, it is our mission and responsibility to work with primary producers and land managers around best practice NRM. Through the recent seven years of drought in our region, it became clear that proper business and financial management is imperative for enhanced NRM. Without education, awareness, professional development and sound business skills, traditional NRM alone will not work for long-term and sustainable drought management responses. The summit saw primary producers connect with the information, tools and systems that will support their capacity and build their resilience to prepare for and respond to future drought and climate change. Across two days in both conference and field day settings, landowners engaged with highly skilled speakers, both locally and from interstate, around regenerative agriculture, business management, landscape rehydration, financial strategies and business systems for better natural resource management. For true drought readiness, people need to be financially and mentally prepared. If people don't manage their cash flow, decision-making and mindset, together with the management of their natural resources, the outcomes are simply not achievable. This is why we held our Agribusiness Summit, to address and encourage both transformative NRM practices for cropping and grazing, as well as business and professional development strategies in relation to NRM and market demands. The event gave people the tools, systems, strategies and opportunity for experimentation to better prepare themselves for drought so they are able to make informed decisions, not reactive ones. Hello, my name is Claire Booth. I'm from near Dubbo in New South Wales and I'm a farmer and a lawyer. Our farm business is Booth Ag and my law business is CO Booth Law and Advisory. So I feel like <clears throat> The most recent drought that we've just come out of, which feels like yesterday, but I know it was two seasons ago, I feel has etched in the brains of farmers, but also lawyers supporting family farms to say, well, we need to make sure we've not only got our silos full and that our green dates are well known in terms of our grazing practices, but also that our financial performance is really clear and what I mean by that is when we have a farm business where our budget is clear, our budget to actual performance is clear and then we communicate that with everyone in the farming family and our bank and our accountant, if we hit gravel as in a crop fails, the livestock market, the price turns, we run out of grass. If something happens which is completely out of our control, if we have communicated our position and done that well, most people around us will actually support us and ensure that whatever we require to make sure we succeed, actually we get. But the clients of mine that were behind on their income tax returns, who didn't have budgets, who didn't actually measure their performance on a, on a regular basis. So some businesses will need to do this annually, some will do it quarterly and some will do it monthly. But the businesses that didn't have a really good handle on their finances, they were behind the eight ball because when they sat down with their bank and said, hey, can we please have an extension on our overdraft limit? Or, hey, can you, Nutrien, Delta, whoever it is, can you please give us um, forward finance to put the crop in? Or a livestock agent, look, can you please give us 300 grand so that we can actually go into the restock market? Or whatever it was. If those people had a reputation for not being across their numbers, it was really easy for someone to say, I'm really sorry, you're a great person, but we can't help you. 
However, the people who invested time, discipline, money, and actually did the boring stuff of spending time in the office and ensuring that they knew what their numbers were doing, and then they strapped it up with a business plan and potentially a succession plan, what they were able to say to all the people around them, livestock financiers, plant and equipment financiers, bankers, whoever, hey, I've hit the gravel at the moment, but I promise you when the commodity cycle comes out of this or when things return to a bit more normal, over the next 10 to 20 years, our plan is solid. Can you support us during this time of need? So I feel like agricultural New South Wales and also broader across Australia, we have been taught in the most recent drought that you have a choice and the choice is very stark. Know your numbers, get organised, spend more time in the office, invest in a bookkeeper, maybe spend more time with your accountant. I don't really mind how you do it, but spend the time knowing your numbers because at some point in time, you will need to demonstrate that you understand financially what's going on. And when you can demonstrate to your bank or your rural financial counsellor or anyone that you've got a great business, but you happen to currently not be going through a great time, you'll be amazed at how much support is out there. But if you aren't prepared to be organised and help yourself, then don't expect anyone else to help you. David McLean, Chief of Delivery with RCS Australia. One of the first things to accept is that variability is your normal and variability is increasing. And so if we're going to put ourselves in control of our businesses when it comes to grazing management and business management, we need to accept that variability is normal. And so we need to think about your business strategy then. So what is your business strategy? How, how are you structured? How flexible are you to be able to adjust your numbers? And so our third grazing principle is to match stocking rate to carrying capacity. So the, the amount of animals that you're running relative to the amount of feed that you've grown. So do you have those skills? Is this a skill that uh, for here in the Gundy region at the moment, we're having a, a cracking season. Are you honing those skills now while the going is good? And are you putting yourself in a position so that next time the season isn't as good, you can proactively manage your way through that? And this, I see that as just the basics. It's getting these basics in place. It's around knowing what your grass inventory is. It's knowing how you sell that grass to the highest bidder in terms of which animals you're going to run, or how you turn your moisture into the best gross margins with crops. Where are your overheads at in your business? Where are your people at? How are they operating? What's their goals? What drives them? What motivates them within the business? And are you structuring the business to be able to work within that? Do you have the right people? Uh, it's nothing sexy, it's nothing, there's no silver bullet, there's no one thing that you go and do and quite often get asked, what what should I be doing? What's What are the top 20% of businesses doing? And my response is a bit boring for some people and I say they're just doing the basic things well. And so just come back to basics, how do you put yourself in control? How do you know what's going on in your business and what drives it? My name's Julia Spicer and I work for Engage and Create Consulting based here in Gundawindi. Uh, I think Agribusiness Summit that uh, McIntyre Ag Alliance and the sponsors and supporters have put on here in Gundawindi over today, over these couple of days, is really important. We want people to be having conversations uh, at a time when they aren't stressed and impacted by a drought. Uh, and, and that's really the best time to be having some of these planning conversations. So people are in the stage of having a really good season. We've got plenty of water. There's a level of enthusiasm in the community. Now is actually the time to have some of these conversations uh, about how we're going to deal with the next drought, the next disaster, the next whatever, because once it's happening, people aren't in the right headspace to, to have those conversations. Yeah, I think mind mindset and mindfulness and being really clear on what is the story that we're telling ourselves, what is happening, how aware are we of what we're thinking about, I think is really important in agriculture, in other industries. But if we think about it from a drought perspective, we need a mindset that matches the environment. It needs to be resilient. It will go through seasons where things are good and not good, uh, but we need to be able to manage that. And it needs to, over time, uh, be in a position where we're improving. So we know we'll have some bad days, that's okay. But if we're having constant bad days, 
we're having constant droughts, if we're having constant whatever, that erodes the asset that we have, whether it is us as humans or our property. Uh, and so that's why I think it's incredibly important from to be to be able to understand your mindset, understand how you work, what's important to you. Uh, if you are having a bad day, what does that look like for you? It's really important to be clear around some of these things. I'm Sam Skeet and I work for the Maloon Institute. So tomorrow we'll be talking about landscape rehydration and really how landscape rehydration is going to support uh, farmers in this community with how they manage, I guess, their landscape but also their business. Landscape rehydration is hugely important for farmers in terms of um, managing for climate, the changing climate and potentially drought. So I guess everyone understands the importance of water in our landscape for agricultural business and rehydration is really about how do we get water back operating in our landscape, not only having it there, but being able to cycle it and cycle it for a productive agricultural business. Tommy Carroll, uh, Chairman of Macintyre Ag Alliance. A real need exists in the community for delivery of sort of techniques and procedures to be able to deal with ever increasingly variable climate um, and drought resilience um, after the last seven years or six or seven years of, of extremely dry time. I think it's become you know, very apparent that there, there was no sort of forward, forward thinking or forecasting in place to deal with um, times of extreme dryness. So um, it's, it's sort of pertinent and it's it's best not to forget that the lessons that we've just learnt um, be better prepared for when the next one comes because Australia, Australia being what it is, the next drought is on its way. Yeah.